Amen, amen. So I want to open, I want to open this up with this verse. It says in Proverbs 3, 5, 8. It says, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Amen. Hallelujah. If I could ask brother, my pastor to pray for me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray for this young man. Lift up your hands. Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for your love and your mercy and for your presence that we feel in like this, like this place this morning. I present to you your, your, your servant, let it be your lips, young man, that if you might use it in a mighty way, that he, he can prevail to the Holy Spirit through the Word, and allow at least one heart to be touched, to be transformed, to be moved, and above all, that we all can grow in the Spirit for your honor and your glory. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. My topic for today, for today's message is fixing our eyes on the Lord. Amen. Amen. What, what ways, you may ask, can we fix? I, you guys may take their seat. Forgive me. What ways, um, may, may you ask, can we fix our eyes on the Lord? During what circumstances? I say through every circumstance, my brothers and sisters, with being patient, doubting, um, lack of faith, while you're being tempted, while you're being discouraged, when you have to deny yourself and deny your flesh and put God first in all you do, while you're being tested, man. And we see that our brother Joe from the Bible went through some of these circumstances, even though he went through it, his eyes were fixed on the Lord. You may ask, how? Amen. Well, let's, let's go to the book of Job, amen? Amen. A quick summary before I, I, I'm going to answer. It says, For we see in the, battle, in, in the Bible that Job was a blameless and upright man. The Lord even said, There is no one, like, there's no one on earth like him, a man who fears God and shuns evil. But we also see that Job was a rich man and had a lot of possessions and wealth and power. But then there came a time when he got tested just like we do, amen? Amen. Amen. And now I'm going to read verse 6, um, book of Job. It says, One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? And Satan answered to the Lord, and said, um, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on him. And then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And then Satan replies to God, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you, put, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has done? He asks, You have blessed the work and his hands, so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to the face. And then we see verse 12, it says, The Lord said to Satan, Very well, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. And then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. For we see here that God had a conversation with Satan, right? Um, about his son Job. And Satan told, told um, yeah. yeah, he won't, he won't, um, Satan told him, haven't you not blessed them and put a hedge so that no, that no harm may come to him? So in God, in a way, yeah, because he, he will bless you because he is under your protection, no? And um, he is faithful. But he said, but now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has to see if Job will still be faithful. To prove his point that Job was, gonna, that Job was going to curse the Lord. And then... We see in verse 13, it says, One day when Job and his daughters were feasting, this is when, um, when after when um, God gave um, the, Satan the power to mess, mess with Job's life, it says, verse 13, One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking, 
why at the oldest brother's house a messenger came to the Job and said, The oxen were blowing and the donkeys were, were grazing nearby, and the servants attacked and made off with them. And they put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. So, okay, imagine you own a farm, amen? And you had these oxen and dogs, donkeys, but you have this neighbor, and your neighbor decides to steal all your ox and donkeys, and then he decides to kill your servants working in your land, and let's say you knew these servants, and we're best friends, but next thing you know, you hear they're killed. While, while you're processing that, it says in the Bible, another messenger comes to you, because it says in verse 16, while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire of God fell from heaven, and burned up the sheep of the ser and, and servants, and I am the only one who has escaped. And so you see, Job right here is like going through a lot right now, like, and he's like so processing what's going on, and, and he, while he's still processing that, and then, like, <laughs> you hear it. So the sheep, the, uh, the the sheep, the servants have perished as well. But you're still processing. He's still processing and heard before about the ox and donkeys. We're seeing here that Job at the moment was going through a lie, man. And if I was Job, if I was Job, in that moment, I know that my heart would be filled with discouragement. Because imagine you just having a normal day. Next thing you know, you get bad news. But while you're hearing that bad news, while you're processing that bad news, another bad news comes. And then it says in the Bible, verse 17, while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said to the Chileans, formed the three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them. But the, the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped. So now the camels, the donkeys, the ox, the sheep, the servants, now at this moment, Job has all his possessions taken away. And other than that, there were innocent blood shed for it. First, you see, amen. And then Job, if I was Job, I would ask myself, what can it get even worse than this? You know, like what else can happen? You know, like will cause like more, so much more pain, you know? But in verse 18, we see another messenger. So this is the fourth messenger. He says, why he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking in the wine of the oldest house when studying, when a sunny, a mighty wind swept from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them and they were, are dead and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Wow. So first, it was the, the, the oxen, the donkeys, and then the sheep, and then the servants. And their servants were still dying. And then it was the camels, and then now his sons and, his sons and daughters. Imagine the process saying that. If you're a father, and then next thing you know, you lose all your possession. But then next thing you know, your family just goes away. Like everything's taken away. And now Job has lost all his possession. Now his family has sons and daughters are now killed. In, and we see at this point that Job was being tested because everything the Lord has blessed has been taken away. Not just power, wealth, material possessions, but now his family. And I know the, the pain, you know, the, because we all have experienced that pain when one of our loved ones um, um, passed away, you know. Um, we feel broken, we feel empty, we feel despair, we feel discouragement. Um, to the point that you don't want to do anything, amen, and all this pain he had must have been heavy, heavy, amen, but even though all this, Job still worshiped God, Job still worshiped God through every circumstance, and who is, who can testify today, even though all you have gone, even though everything you have gone, the Lord is still working, even though everything may seem going wrong, but the Lord is still having his way, for my Even though Job still worshiped God, wow! With even though all this happened, every even though all his possessions was taken away, his family, I, 
how, I don't know how he did it, but he still worshiped God. And then in verse 20, it says, At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. And then he fell to the ground and worshiped God and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the Lord be praised. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. I know, but I have to praise you. Even though I've been feeling this, I will still praise your name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And it says, in all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Even though God was testing him, Job did not sin against God. We st still continue being faithful. Amen? Amen. Wow. I, picture, I, I ask myself, how many of us would be like Job when times of trial and tribulation come? Will we continue to praise and worship the Lord? Because even with all this, Job still praised and worshiped because he knew Lord, the Lord was worthy of, of the worship and all praise. Will we still worship God with all this? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And what I got, what touched me was like, wow, when he says, when, when, he, when it says, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away, that says, may the Lord, I, I reflect this, this because the moment in life, everything may be good, but then the next thing, you know, you start having things taken away. And to, to be honest with you, if I was Job, I, I know my spirit would be hindered at times. Like, wow, well, like, life is tough, but what can I do? But well, what can I do is fix my eyes on the Lord, for He is worthy. Hallelujah, the Lord is worthy. So I will fix my eyes on you, even when times get dark, even when times are rough. I will fix my eyes on you, O Lord, O Father, of Jesus, for you are the way, for you are the truth. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then again, Satan came to God and saw that Job still praised and worshiped God, but Satan didn't have enough. To summarize chapter 2, it says in the Bible that Satan afflicted Job with painful sores, from sores of his feet to the crown of his head. In verse 8, it says, Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. And his wife said to him, wow, I love this. Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. And then Job replies, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? And all this Job did not sin and said, Wow. Even though all what Job had gone through and all the emotional, mental, physical pain, but he still fixed his eyes on the Lord. He did not curse him or turn his way, his eyes away because he knew that the Lord is good. Just because he had everything taken doesn't mean time. It's time to leave the Lord. But it's, it's time to call on the Lord and fix his eyes on him even more. Amen. Amen. And now we see... Um, now we see one person in the Bible that fixed his eyes on the Lord through all circumstances. But now we're going to read um, what happens when our eyes start to wander away from the Lord. Amen. Let's, I'm going to use Peter. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 28. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, Peter replied, Tell me, God, to you on the walk to come to you on the water come he said then peter got down out of the boat and walked on the on the water and came toward jesus verse 30 but when he saw the wind he was afraid and beginning to sink and cried out lord save me while well, this verse goes, speaks a lot amen so we see that peter is walking to jesus right when peter was when peter got off the boat he, he was walking towards Jesus. He was walking on water. Amen. But then, so, but as soon as Peter, um, it says, as soon as Peter 
uh, saw the wedding, so his eyes drifted, amen? His eyes drifted, his eyes wandered to the wind, not to God anymore, and he began to sink, amen? And we, in that very moment, we see that Peter wandered his eyes to the wind and started to sink in the water. Many times that happened to us in our walk with God. As soon as our eyes leave Jesus, we start facing more problems. We start sinking because we get driven away from God's Word. And our eyes start to focus on what's going around, and we forget our priority is Jesus. And we are nothing without Him. Amen? And brothers and sisters, we got to reflect and ask ourselves, what is keeping my eyes away from the Lord? Because, amen, as soon as, because he got off the boat, because he called to, to Jesus, call me, you know, let me go where you are. You know, he had that faith. And he was walking in the water. He had his eyes towards Jesus. But as soon as his, his, his attention, his, yeah, as soon as he, Wandered and saw the wind. That's when he began to sink. Amen. He began to sink. And many times we're like that. We're 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 walking with God. We have our focus in God, and then something happens in our life, and then we drive away from God. And through that driving away, our problems get even worse and worse and worse because our focus, our attention is not no more on God, but what's going on around us. And we cannot be like that because if we be like that, we're just going to sink like Peter. But we, but it says then Peter called the Lord, save me. And then the Lord said, you that have a little bit of faith. And then the Lord saved them. Amen. Amen. Um, and I'm going to ask you this. What troubles comes to present in your life? And what are you going to do, to, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do about it? When trouble comes to your life, what are you going to do to it? Amen. What are you going to do about it, man? Forgive me. And many of us, we're going to face, um, face like Job. We're going to face problems, not one, but multiple at the same time. But what are we going to do about it? Are we going to be like Job or like Peter? For Peter said, says in the Bible, his eyes were driven away and he heard the sound of the storm wind. Brothers and sisters, we cannot be like Peter because if we are then, our focus is not going to be on God anymore, but instead of what's going around us. And we start doing, we start, then our, we're, we're going to start doing what well, like Peter did. He's going to start sinking because we are leaning in our own problems and, and what's going around us instead of God, amen? That's why, even though we, face, we are facing problems, we have to be like Job and praising God through all circumstances and, and problems. For it says in the Bible, I look up to the mountains and my hope comes from the Lord and to the heavens, not by looking where my problem is around me, but by fixing my eyes to the Lord who strengthens me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to read this verse, and it, it touched me. And Matthew, I think it's Matthew. I think it's Matthew. But it's Matthew. It says, if I'm not wrong, it's for Matthew chapter 4. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your body will be full of light. Verse 23. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your body will be full of darkness. And then the light within you is darkness. How great is your darkness? Amen. So our eyes is the, is the lamp of our body, is the light of our body. And if our eyes are being filled with darkness, if our eyes is not on Jesus, then our life is going to be filled with darkness. Our insides are going to be filled with darkness. And it's not going to be any, not anymore in God's path. It's not going to be in God's things, but it's going to be in our things, in our flesh, in carnal. Amen? And we have to be careful and reflect ourselves because... The devil will rather have you, you having, you having fun than having your eyes focus on God. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Now, I'm gonna, I'm going to end with this verse. It says Hebrews 12, verse I think one. 
says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so, by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cro cross, sporting his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. And this is how I ended, but also I want to encourage I want to encourage you guys to continue seeking on God because nothing, 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 nothing will help you but only God. For our eyes need to be fixed on God and only on God. For God is good, for God is worthy, for God is lovely, for his love is so sweet, it's sweeter than honey, amen. And nothing else will help you like God will. Amen.